sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Oh, top of the morning, Gia. This is the After Hours of T.C. Rastani, the podcast. I'm T.C. O. Rastani, mm-hmm. emanating from the Palatial Podcast Penthouse. And, and we're just about on the heels of St. Patrick's Day. And I'm here with my esteemed panel of experts, Quincy Briscoe and Ricky Bittman. Hey, everybody. Conspicuous by his absence is mm. South Boston Jeff. Now, this is like Christmas for people who live in South Boston. That's true. So he's down there getting ready. Now, you, you heard through the grapevine that he got some helium and he some did. balloons? He got, a, he got a deal on one of those real tall helium tanks. Remember okay. like back in the day sure. outside the garden, those big yellow balloons, a guy had the tank. So he got a deal on that, but he only had the tank for like like 13 hours. Uh-oh. So he had all the green balloons. So he spent the last 13 hours blowing them all up, tying the strings to them. And he's kind of just got to find, he's, he's got like 200 balloons and he's charging five bucks a pop. So that's be a nice payday for him. Does he have him on, on, a, on a shopping carriage? I don't know. Well, he's going to have to have a shopping carriage because uh, I had some fake credentials, uh, a peddler's license printed oh, up for him. peddler's license. Yeah. So What's the balloons for? St. Patrick's Day. They always sell them on the parade route. And here's an interesting thing about that, okay? Because I grew up in Southie. I had spent some time there in my younger days. Back in the original days of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, they had really great giveaways. Oh, not giveaways. Souvenirs. Souvenirs. They had the green balloons. Right. They had, like, Kiss Me, I'm Irish uh, lenticular badges when you, when you uh, like, sort of tilted them, that the lips puckered and blew your little wow. kiss. Wow. Those were nice. Or oh, they had ones that just said Erin Gobra, little Irish flags and stuff. But the coolest thing you could buy on the day of St. Patrick's Day Parade, I always bought it, was the the green rabbit's foot. Remember rabbit's feet they I used do, to sell? I do, yes. And it was kind of a little ball and keychain, ball uh, ball chain there. And uh, it was just the coolest thing. And if you potted the little rabbit hair, you saw the toenail. And you're like, wow, this is a real rabbit's foot. Well, that's how John Malkovich snuck the bullets in, in the line of fire. Remember? Exactly. Oh, that's right. Great. Why it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, isn't that, uh, that's still another week away, right? Uh, no, it's, it's, about, this, it's this Sunday. It's about four days away. Yeah. Well, well um, then I would think you wait just a little bit longer to blow the balloons up, don't well, you? Yeah, exactly. But he only had the, okay, getting back to the original story, he only had the balloons for the tank for 13 hours. So now he's got these 200 balloons. He's squatting down somewhere, holding on to them, and hoping they don't. nobody opens a door or a window, and his profit's going to fly right away. Well, he flies away. Exactly. It could be. That's, 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 a, that's a major thing. I've gone to the St. Patrick's Day uh, Parade in Southie, but, but this was back in the... Uh, in the 1980s? Yeah, yeah. It was still okay then. I actually went to the uh, the Billy Bulger breakfast. Oh, well, now you're talking. You know, that was Back a pretty good Back at the old uh, Bayside Club, they used to oh, call okay. it. Okay, well, it could or have been Ch- that. Howie Cow would call it Halitosis Hall. <laughs> Halitosis Hall. Well, I remember going there with my, with my grandpa, and uh, we're having a good uh, corned beef uh, oh. and cabbage breakfast. They did. They <laughs> served it the best. It was fantastic. I had no idea who Billy Bulger was mm-hmm. at the time. Nope. Uh, you know, I didn't know that he was the brother of the most notorious gangster in Boston I, history. I, I never knew that either, and I grew Whitey up there. Whitey Bulger. So, yeah, yeah it was really, you really don't think he knew what was going on? Exactly. Well, they asked him one time, and he said, he's my brother, and I love him. And that's how he answered the question. Jimmy's business is Jimmy's business. Exactly. Right. And, and I believe that. I believe he knew, but, I mean, he's not out there, you know, helping him bury the bodies. Well, you, know? you never know. Well, that was over the Bulger bur- burial ground, which is in the Ponset River. That's true. And then we see that one special, every time he drove by that area, mm. he'd, he'd say hi to one of the guys he buried. No. There I, was, well, he, I can't remember who it was, but somebody was blowing a whistle on him, and he says, and every time he drove by that area in the Ponset and the Ponset Bridge, he'd look over and he'd go, thanks so-and-so, like the guy. He, really? Because the guy was buried there. You know what the other burial ground was? Where it was behind Bisuteki. Really? Right, that little marsh area there. Yeah, yeah. That's where a lot of the uh, Italians well, used to bury their problems. I always say the Italians were a little smarter at this stuff than the Irish, you know. Well, it was the Irish uh, mob that you know ratted out the Italian mobs to yeah, the feds and I got know. rid of them. Hey, 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 not, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish uh, Sicilian, so you know. Well, there you go. Well, I'm Irish Italian. There you go. So I have both <laughs> the best of both worlds there. I get to call you know cousin Vito yeah. or cousin Patrick on the mm-hmm. other side over there, you know. And like, don't get me wrong. I love the Irish people. I love the Irish music and the culture. That's right. You're good friends with. Uh, Dennis o. O'Gorman. Dennis O'Gorman. I saw him last Saturday down at Mr. Dooley's. Really? Yeah. Did he sing my favorite? He did, The Ferryman. 
Can you give me a little, give me, give us uh, a few bars. Where the strawberry beds sweep down to the liffy. I love that song. We'll throw away my worries and my cares. I love you all today. I love you more tomorrow. But if you ever love me, Molly, love me now. That's what, my Dennis What day. about the airplane one? He's an airline bird. Airline bird, fly me high. <laughs> Take me back to the land that I long for. In misty <laughs> days before I said goodbye, pick me up, airline bird, fly me home. <laughs> I remember when we had him down here at Rastani Productions, right before yeah. the pandemic, we recorded a little concert with him. We did, we did, it was great. And he, he was... had on these red glasses, and I said he looked like Enoch from <laughs> Land of the Lost. Interesting thing about the glasses, I, sh- I, I should have me- remembered to bring this up. He got LASIK surgery, Uh-oh. no more glasses. Oh, c- c- can we find those glasses? I'm telling you, I, I, I kind of said to him, I said, you should really go have the glasses redone without the prescription and keep the red. And he goes, oh, let's, let's think about it, Richie. But it's nice not to have to worry about it. You mean uh, the frames are red? The, the lenses were like a, like a, um, almost a, a red, but kind of in between a pink and a red. But it was very distinct. They were fantastic. You, and you, you, you were, I love them. First thing TC says when I introduce him to Dennis, he goes, he looks like Enoch. And I, I almost. Well, um, yeah, that was, if that you was look classic. Hard, I suppose if you look hard enough, you can get these glasses. Unbelievable. I'm getting through my earpiece. We have to take a quick commercial break. Something's, something's breaking and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be right back oh, after geez. this. Okay. Hi, I'm Abigail Harwood, the executive producer of After Hours with TC Rastani, and I want to give a huge shout out to my favorite fisherman, Captain Dave Marciano from Wicked Tuna. Thank you so much for this shirt, I absolutely love it. If you or anyone you know is interested in getting merchandise from Captain Dave Marciano and Angelica Fisheries, follow the information on the screen and tell them that Abby sent you. Tails up. All right, welcome back from that big time uh, emergency commercial break. During the commercial break, we had to go up on the roof Mm -hmm. because a helicopter landed. Mm -hmm. And who came out with some of his balloons? None other than South Boston Jeff. What's going Jeff, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on, TC? Feeling good up here. You know, uh, it feels like I feel feeling kind of like a big shot being dropped off like a, like Commissioner Gordon or Batman. Well, that was cool. <laughs> well, we were talking about prior to the commercial break that you, you know, bought. How many balloons did you say, Batman? He did, you told me 200 balloons. 200 balloons for St. Patrick's Day Parade that's coming up in a few days. And your helium tank is just out of out of almost out of whack down there, and you brought it in to you know to show us that you, you know what you've been doing. Well, uh, yeah, it's uh, like uh, my helium tank. Well, it's uh, actually uh, like uh, the 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 balloons are just uh, so much more exciting, and I sell a whole lot more of them if you fill them up with nitrous oxide. Oh no! Oh. Dentist, I should have uh, saw so that angle coming. Look, 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 what's the difference between nitrous oxide and helium? Oh, one's a, a lot more fun. Take a puff. Yeah. Take a puff and find out. Well, like uh, like uh, nitrous oxide is uh, what they use at the dentist. At, uh, well, they give it to the kids basically. Yeah. Uh, the ones they don't want uh, who can't handle the needles, you know. The, oh, it's you don't get the ne- well, It's kind of like Novocaine. It's more of a, more of a gas. They, uh, it's laughing gas. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty much gas a cane. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and, and Jeff does it right over there. Let's listen to this. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it comes out very um, it comes out very uh, rapidly and changes my voice into Freddy Krueger. Happy he's St. Patrick's Day away, from but... from Elm Street. <laughs> hey, he's like he's being possessed down there. Got to get an exorcism going on. Forget the balloons. I, I'm, I'm literally <laughs> a guest. I've never seen this in my life. <laughs> okay, that yeah, yeah that's uh, went from an innocent story of rabbit's feet and kiss me on Irish badges. Wow, so this decadence. This really works. <laughs> this shit really works, I as they say. Does. And uh, like, uh, I can't believe the uh, uh, you heard the w- the way it changed my voice. Yeah, and, uh, it did. And uh, well, uh, it's also altered my state of mind very I bet, nicely. I bet it has. Very nicely. So, uh, can you imagine if I uh, you know, walking around with balloons full of this, and, uh, yeah. and you give it and everything? I think uh, South uh, South Boston is going to be very happy this uh, this, this St. Patrick's Day. I think Day. the price on those balloons just went up about fifteen dollars. Now, is it regular or unleaded? Oh, like uh, it's is cherry it flavored. It's cherry flavored. Uh, yeah, it. something like that. I would have thought, though, you waited just a bit longer to do the balloons. I hope uh, the balloons are uh, last Peach year. mango flavored, actually. Oh, it's peach mango flavored. So these kids, if they pop the balloon, they're going to have peach mango gas inside their green balloons. Wow. <laughs> Quincy, you want to try it? Do I dare? Yeah, <laughs> come on. It's not going to affect that brain. Come on. Come on, Quincy, try it. It tastes, it's, it's, it's flavored gas. What flavor? 
He just told you. Pete's really want to do this. <laughs> just uh. Hi there. How we doing, folks? <laughs> oh, folks, this is really thrilling. <laughs> oh, this is great. It turns him into Paul Lund. It turns into him into the. It turns him into the gay genie. I'll take Quincy for the center square. Oh, this is so thrilling. Unbelievable. <laughs> It's charge up, that's for sure. Is there a limit on how many hits you can do on that? Um, no, I, I guess there's a limit of uh, how many, um, like, uh, how, how... I am Darth Nihilus. You sound like you're in the Witness Protection Program. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you put you in silhouette? It, it makes for a very interesting uh, live... Uh, yeah, yeah, you see, it just wore off as I was speaking, and it makes for a very great live performance. It really does. Well, yeah, you know, I'm I telling think, you. I think this should be on, uh, on, a, on a New Year's Eve special or something. Yeah, something like that. But uh, uh, as you can see, uh, like uh, my voice is back to normal. Yeah, yeah. But like, uh, like, uh, like uh, the gas uh, makes my voice deeper, and it, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. That's, I un mean, that's, uh, that's unbelievable. How much does that tank weigh? It's like, it looks like it's a good 15 pounds. It looks heavy. Uh, the, yeah, that's about uh, uh, 20 pounds, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how many, uh, uh, like, uh, ounces, ounce, uh, how, uh, how much it is uh, weighed by nitric gas or something like that. Now, but, where do you get something yeah. like that? Uh, you get it uh, at, at, like, uh, the party store and everything. Yeah, well, like, uh, because... Not only, uh, like, uh, let's say uh, you're buying tanks of helium and everything. Well, uh, they, they, they sell me these thinking I'm going to be uh, making uh, gobs and gobs of uh, things out of whipped cream. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, basically, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So, yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to be mixing this with milk and everything. And, uh, and, uh, what cream? Uh, I don't yeah. get it. What's well, technically, you just did mix it with milk or quinzy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All the milk well, in the state is in his stomach. What cream got to do with nitrogas? Uh, because uh, like uh, it, it's what uh, makes the cream. It gives the 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 cream its um fluffiness and its density. It turns it into the liquid and gives it its fluff. My density has brought me that to you. Gas will do uh, things to whipped cream. Yeah. All right. Well, then uh, uh, you you got to be careful on um how much whipped cream to eat now and all that, don't well, you? Were those called whippets when we were younger? Uh, yeah, something like that. But that, that, the, that's uh, when we uh, like uh, sucked them directly out of those, uh, like uh, like uh, directly out of the canisters mm -hmm. and everything that like, uh, you know, I, I went out with a girl from Friendly's just for, uh, specifically <laughs> for that purpose. I was dating her just so she could, uh, just so she could uh, get me back there after closing time and we would do the whippets together. We would have a ball. But, won't that like affect? I'm just, I yeah, well, I'm the desserts like <laughs> if someone takes a spoonful of whipped cream with that gas, won't that get them high or? Um, no, no, not necessarily because the uh, the like uh, it's uh, the like uh, the 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 nitrous has already like expanded the the whipped cream into its fluff form. Oh, so that won't affect. So uh, s someone can't get high off a, a dessert. Oh, uh, no, 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 not off the cream that. itself. You can have, uh, uh, yeah, you can have uh, spoonfuls and spoonfuls of whipped cream because and it's uh, already, uh, the gas is already turned, uh, the nitrate gas has already turned the cream into fluffiness. That's into all it does, just turn it into fluffiness. You know when you take yeah. the can and you spray it? Right. It's the nitrous that makes it spray out of the can. So that's the gas that pushes it out of the can. Huh. And that's its, that's its purpose, not what this is. <laughs> Would you care for another belch? <laughs> Would you care for a little more, Quincy, Q-Man? Why Q not? <laughs> Herman, you big dummy, you locked us fun. in the bank vault. This is welcome to Mr. Wizard's oh, Jesus world. Jesus Christ. Here we go again. Um, <laughs> and now for today's news. Three dead pegs just built a house of straw. Oh, my God. Just when you thought it could get more bizarre with Quincy I, Briscoe. I want to tell you, I really thought I had seen everything. I never thought I would see You think you'd wake up this morning? No. I mean, you wanted to turn... And I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You no, wanted, it's, it makes for a great podcast. It seriously does. Just think, before Jeff's helicopter landed, you, the big story is going to be a manwich. A manwich. I was, I was just going to say that. I mean, I'm not even going to mention the fucking manwich now. <laughs> well, I think you should. But I, let's bring it down to earth. Okay, all right, all right. You know, let them huff and puff and blow away over here. I'm just, I, Jeff. I, I, you should have. They should have wrote you into <laughs> Shameless. 
<laughs> there should have been a, there should have been a Jeff Southie Jeff in Shameless. He should have lived on the other side. I'm telling you, you, know, you Frank had on, on you. you got Sheila on <laughs> yeah. one side and Jeff on the other. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's I'm a sure compliment. They uh, like uh, they should, uh, they could have worked a character for me, or I could have worked my I'm own. I'm telling you, and I mean that as somewhere. a sincere compliment. Like, uh, yeah, uh, you, you, like uh, <laughs> you could have been cousin Jeff Gallagher. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm just like, ah, uh, you know what? They can always do a reunion show. Oh they my need god! New characters. So if, uh, she, she put a picture on Instagram today. Did you see it? Oh, her new hair. Yeah. Yeah. Of course Very I did. Nice. Yeah. She's gorgeous. Where did it? Uh, okay, so I'm at the end of uh, season five. Season five. Um, Debbie hooked up with that kid. <laughs> I think I know what happened there. And uh, the Spanish kid. Yes. Okay. And Ian is with the mother. <laughs> Oh, on the road? Yep. He's and, all uh, fucked up out of his mind? Lip is like teetering on, on going forward into college or back into the into the hood. And uh, it, 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 I had to shut it off right as she's walking through the house, right near the end of the episode. She thinks she has the house to herself, and she's walking around the house, um, uh, Fiona. And I had to shut it off. Oh. And I, so I'm like, I, I'm really, I'm, as I get closer to knowing that she's going to be gone, I just really regret it. Well, welcome to Shameless yeah. Rastani style down yeah. here. Yeah, this is something <laughs> else, though. I mean, I... I Oh, and he was with the nurse who had found out she had cancer. Uh, oh, the young girl? Yeah, and they were in Costa Rica. And she's, oh. The last I saw was he's trying to buy a gun, and she's flirting with a nice-looking young kid, which I knew was going to happen. But. Oh, that was one when she went about the $10,000 bottle of booze. Yes, yeah, some scotch. Right. made me want to try that. I will say that, but uh, I don't have 10 grand for <laughs> And that. her family was all against her oh, being boy, with Frank. Oh, boy, in a big, big way. I don't understand. You know what they, they make? Uh, I'm drinking rum, um, uh, like uh, rum and coke flavored coke, and there isn't even any rum in it. But it's uh, this new spiced flavor. I was just going to say that's a, that, that's a different label. I was yeah. noticing. It's like yeah, a, it looks like a tab from here. Yeah, it's spice flavor. So it's like a, it's supposed to taste like a rum and coke, but uh, there's no alcohol. Is this in a it. dune tie-in? Kind of I was just going to say kind of a tease <laughs> to me. Is that a dune tie-in? Yeah, uh -huh, maybe. Spice. It's funny. This oh, is the this spice. Yeah, he who can. Rose the spiced. You mean that Coke is spiced right now? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Spice with what? Spice. spice. Oh, the whole spice rack. He who controls the spice controls the universe. Just, oh, I love the I love the effect it has on my mind. Yeah. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> There's more combination in Jeff right now than that drink. <laughs> Put a cap the on him and I'm screwing yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, I'm, I'm shaking to my foundation. Yeah. Well, all right. Speaking of shaking, let's talk about your manwich situation. Okay. Well, uh, I was. Can you explain what a manwich is for people who a don't know? A manwich is not a, a sandwich. Is a sandwich, but a manwich is a meal. Meal. Yeah. Um, and you like manwiches, sloppy yeah, joes? Yeah, manwiches okay. are, are good. They are good. They're, you know. they're very um. Tasty. Yeah, but I had a lot of things going on today, and I stopped over Tosh Lent's house on my way home to come up here. She said, come on over for dinner. She brings me out a manwich on a plate. Right. Nothing. No no side, no pickle, no chips, no fries, nothing. Well, was the manwich a big size? Um... No, it was just like a regular little hamburger <clears throat> bun that you buy in the supermarket. It wasn't even like a, like a really nice roll. What's in a manwich? Okay, so you take, you know, there's two types of manwich. Actually, I think there's three. I think there's bourbon flavored, okay. bold, and original. We always buy the bold. The original, it doesn't taste like anything anymore since I've been getting the bold. It's not hot. It just has a good barbecue sauce taste. To it. Okay. Now, we stop doing it with beef. We do it with ground turkey just because it's a little bit lighter. So is it like a sloppy joe? Exactly. That's I all it is. I was going to ask. Yeah. I was going to ask what the difference is between the man with It's very and close, I thought, to a sloppy joe's. Well, that's basically what it is, but they just... The original flavor. Coined this to... No flavors at all. It tastes, tastes like plain, regular uh, sloppy joe's, yeah. which is... But the bold is a little nicer. It gives you more of a kick. And, and the other one is... Down. I'm just telling you, I was a little bit There's bold, down. and there's... What you said, the third flavor? Bourbon. Now, what, what kind of what, is, what goes perfect with a side for a manwich? Some nice steak fries or some nice crinkle cut fries, a little right. dill pickle. Boom, you got your dinner. There you go. Now, do you put anything on the manwich? Uh, yeah, actually, a little Swiss, Swiss cheese if it's sliced thin. Right. You know, sometimes you go to the deli, they slice it too thick. You should nice, thinly sliced Swiss cheese. Wow. And put that on there. It melts in nice. That sounds delish. It yeah, is. It's nice. It but you know what I, she did make? I, I, it sounds like I'd appreciate some nice cornbread with it or something like that. There you go. See, I, I would actually eat it without the hamburger roll with some cornbread and little beans on the side. Oh, as long it's, as that's not too spicy. It's, like chili. it's actually, not spicy. Actually, Quincy, I can translate this into your world. It's a Diablo sandwich. Yeah. Oh! Let me have a Diablo sandwich, Dr. Pepper, make it fast. I'm in the goddamn hurry. You are, son! Hush, puppy, day. You got no time for that crap! Dumb son of a bitch. Remember Steakums? 
Yes, I do. Steak um some. You couldn't make a decent one though without cooking the whole box. Because <laughs> they were so paper thin. <laughs> they were so thin. Yeah. And sometimes if you if you forgot they were on there, it would disintegrate. Yeah. Boom. <clears throat> Not even heard that name, Steak um since. Because yeah. on the box it looks so good. Yeah. And then when you bring it home. It has like two pieces of paper holding yep, it together. But you have to throw the whole box in there to make it And you put it in, and, and if you didn't have anything with it, it tasted like cardboard. Yeah. I mean, you, you had, had to, to put throw American onions cheese on there and, and stuff. Uh, and cheese. Like and, a steak and cheese. And peppers and, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, peppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you get down in brass tacks, it would be just easier to call the steak shop, uh, shop down yeah. the street to get a sub. Yeah, yeah. But the trouble, you're saying that uh, steak I'm strong too much? Quick, very, very quick. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you had a high burning, uh, like when we were kids, we had the gas burning flames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the stove, and, and they just cooked those dope. up real, real quick. Yeah, nice. So they shrink a lot like bacon, if you ask me. Pretty, yeah. Well, even quicker than bacon. But now, speaking well, of. Well, did you like the flavor of steakums? Yeah, they would. They would taste it like a bootleg steak and cheese. Yeah, there was. It was just like some sort of processed meat. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a tease, kind of like a warm up for yeah. a real meal. Look right. like beef taffy. Exactly. Huh. But I, I wanted to tell you, Tash did make a dinner this week that I said I should bring some of this up to TC. What is it? But I wasn't sure you could eat it. I've been, now I've been gonna... cheating. My cardiologist might not right. be listening, but well, <clears throat> I haven't had red meat or anything. I haven't done that. And this fish. is not red meat. I had fish. She made a big uh, casserole dish of tuna casserole. Have you ever had tuna casserole? Well, not since I watched Welcome Back, Carter. In, in, in oh, yeah, night. Julie. And, and, and that's why I never ate it until right. she made it one night. All right. What's in a tuna casserole okay. other than tuna? The, the Pennsylvania Dutch noodles. Okay. You take a can of, this is where it might get dicey for you, a can of uh, Campbell's cream and mushroom soup. Right. And you put a little cheddar cheese on there, and then you crumble uh, Ritz crackers, and then you bake it. Okay. And, uh, and of course, tuna fish. You got to put tuna fish in there. You put three cans of solid white tuna in there, mix it all up, and it, I'm telling you, it's delicious. It sounds delicious. It, it really is. is. Now, because that really something is. could pass your, your muster? Or? I will, I will, if you bring down a sample, I will have a super all right. sample. Uh, next time she makes it, I promise you. <clears> yeah, it's, a, it's like a small step down from a hamburger helper. I mean, yeah. they do make uh, tuna, tuna helper. They do. And which it, is very good it and is. everything. But, uh, like, uh, so, no, but no. why do they make tuna helper? I mean, can you, you, who cannot afford a can of tuna? Well, no, you put the tuna in with it. Yeah, but what tuna? You, what, why do you need help with the tuna? Well, it just brings it, you know, some people, I like tuna with mayonnaise and a little celery and a little Old Bay and a little oh, lemon juice. I'm not a fan of the celery. Oh, I like the celery. In no. There. You got to chop it up nice and small. Yeah, my tuna, you have mayonnaise, yeah. pickles. That's it. No. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm more about the celery around yeah. my household's uh, celery. Maybe a little, like, uh, it's yeah, always a good for chicken. you. Yeah, a little that. Mm. But you know the weird thing I do with a tuna sub? There's a place of over in Woburn that's called AJ's, I think it's or something like that. Giovanni's. And they make the tuna sub, but they don't use the solid white. They use the light tuna that's real kind of fishy. Right. And they do it with a nice mayonnaise, and I always order it with pickles and tomatoes. But I asked them to put the pickles and tomatoes on the side with little containers. Right. Bring the sub home, and I dismantle it, take it all out of the roll, put a little Swiss cheese in the roll. Then I take the pickles and the tomatoes, I dry them out. Then I take all that tuna, throw it in a bowl mix it all in and then put it back into the sub roll. Okay, sounds delish. Because when you order a tuna sub, say you're not going to eat it for 30 minutes. All the pickle juice, all the tomato sauce, all the tomato water soaks the whole thing and just I just want to throw it right out the window. That's now, a little tip for everybody. Now, this may sound weird, but every time I used to get a craving for a tuna fish sandwich, mm -hmm. I was watching Godfather 2. <laughs> That's right, because that's uh, uh, Roth, isn't he? When that Hyman Roth was sitting there, and <laughs> yeah. Michael visited him in Miami, yeah. and his wife comes, I'm making a tuna sandwich, and I'm just sitting there, <laughs> like, it's like three in the morning. That would be nice right now. I'm freaking, <laughs> I'm hungry, and I'm watching Godfather 2, <laughs> and Hyman Roth is just made, the way he's eating it, yeah. it's like, pause, yeah. go downstairs, can opener, make this honking tuna sandwich. Bring it up, unpause, and watch Godfather 2 with a tuna So your go-to is just the tuna and the mayo. And a pickle. And a pickle. Right. And Cane's mayonnaise? Cane's. That's right. Must be Cane's mayonnaise. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah. For for me, it's the movie Mr. Mom. That, uh, that, yeah. that, that, that That's another movie with tuna references in it. Yeah. Schooner tuna. The Schooner. tuna with a heart. That's, that's right. right. Schooner tuna. Schooner tuna. Jeez. That's a good I haven't one. heard that name in a long time, Canes, but they're still around, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly, sure. yeah. I mean, the uh, thing yeah, I, I don't go with that Hillman's crap. Yeah. The, well, the thing I liked about Canes was their potato chip, potato chip commercials. And don't worry about the Canes guy. He's just trying to do his job. Oh, and don't oh, forget, our right. former executive producer, whose name was Sabrina Champagne Cane. Yeah. Spelled the same way. Exactly the same way. I'd like to spread her on tuna fish. <laughs> ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -bum. <laughs> <laughs> there it was. 
<laughs> if she's listening, it's all in good fun. <clears throat> hey, speaking of that, have what? you had any updates on your producer, Galen? No, I really haven't. I just did my latest episode, and a couple of times I looked over looking for it him. He wasn't there. No. It was a good episode, too. What was the episode about? Uh, it was just, you know, I, I mentioned Tasha's tuna casserole uh, uh, recipe, and I mentioned some stuff about the band Ween, by the way, the uh, one of the lead I love Ween. That's one of, like, uh, like uh, the, they are very underrated. Underrated, but... under the radar, even. Oh, know? yeah. Uh, they, gonna... So many good songs. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, they're, 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 yeah, they're like, uh, nobody realized that, like, how many hits they uh, that they really have. Yeah. And, uh, what's the, what's and the... you go to the show, and it's just, just a blast. Yeah. What's but, some of the songs? They say, "Oh God, off the top of my head, I don't know." But I'm, uh, I just they, recently uh, one got of their uh, like uh, their, their, their most uh, one of their most popular songs is the song that they were listening to in the movie Road Trip. It's called Voodoo Lady. Voodoo Lady, yeah. I like a dude with you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> With you and me and your voodoo, something like that. Well, it's Voodoo Lady, but the, the, another one of their uh, the, the, their most popular songs uh, from the uh, Push the Little Daisies and Make Them Come Up. It was a uh, high, more high pitched song. It was like Push the Little Daisies and Make Them Come Up. Push the Little Daisies and Make Them Come Up. And you think, it, like I said in one of my episodes, I said, I, know. Yeah, I didn't know whether my leg was being pulled or my chain was being yanked because my buddy Quick turned me on to them and he said, Try, check out 12 Country. 12 Golden Country Greats. They did a country album. That's actually going to blow you blow your socks off. It's Unbelievable. amazing. Unbelievable. Oh yeah. But the, the lead the, the lead guy in there, Deaners there, he uh, he's taking the mental health break from the road and he's going to lay low for the summer and go back out in September. So oh yeah. 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 They 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 they're very strange guys. They do do a lot of drugs and everything. Yeah. Uh, the the two brothers, Dean and Gene Ween. And they kind of were almost formed as a joke. And yeah. then it just like sort of snowballed into oh, being yeah, a real yeah, man yeah. with people real street got it, cred. Uh, yeah, people uh, like took it serious and yeah. everything. Like, uh, yeah, it started out as like uh, the buying, whole ween. yeah, <laughs> buying uh, crappy instruments and yeah. uh, writing the crappy uh, and writing ridiculous sounding songs. Yeah, and they yeah, took this off. song, uh, this next song really sucks. It's called uh, <laughs> well, whatever, but that uh, that's how it went. But uh, people ate it up like. <laughs> Who needs Google when you got Sal Boston uh, Jeff, I'm you. and Ricky Bit yeah. in here? Yeah. So, uh, shocked me but i did i did get a, a shout out somebody found one of my stickers down in florida okay and he emailed me and i had him record a little message on this so i got the uh, uh derek knowles out of kissimmee florida found my sticker in miller's alehouse and unbelievable he, he cut a little promo at the beginning of and the of show. course if you want to listen to ricky bitman's jukebox yep. it is exclusively on, on spotify. spotify check it out unbelievable love listening to that i haven't gotten caught Thank up you. on this one I like listening to you at like three in the morning, you know, I, since I don't eat tuna fish that much anymore. Yeah, all about the definitely music. a good time to listen to tune into the jukebox and everything. Like, when you. it's three in the mo morning, it's always darkest before the dawn. Oh. Yeah, like uh, if you ever hear that expression, it's because it's true. I, I am the most depressed when I'm uh, like uh, if I'm up at the if I'm up at like three in the morning, you know, something isn't right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, either I have insomnia or I, I can't find anything good to watch. But being up at three in the morning. Is it is not good? No, so you need it's a to creepy feeling. Yeah, you I need see it to. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you need something to be watching something uh, re really good or listening to some really. Maybe cool you music. just had a bad nightmare that you woke up at three, but then well, whatever you go the back case, sleep, yeah, right? whatever the case may be. I mean, it, it just, like uh, when you're up at three thirty, uh, when you're up at three three thirty in the morning, when you should be sleeping, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, some uh, some deal of in insomnia or maybe it's depression, but it's not good to be up at 3 30 in the morning and just, you know like uh i have to because uh like i'm up uh listening making sure my father's not falling out of bed or yeah. I, I do my vampire hours and everything yeah. but uh i usually fall asleep at like uh between two and three in the morning wow, that, that is usually 8 a.m for me There's, wow. everybody else's 3 a.m feeling is 8 a.m for me Ugh. don't like 8 a.m you know, that, that's that, when my that, day starts. That, day. Yeah, that's uh, that's when Toonie the Tuna starts. <laughs> Speaking of yeah, Tuna. Yeah. Don't you like <laughs> Toonie the Tuna? Build a cartoon carrier there you and right Toonie the Tuna. <laughs> well, uh, who, um, a lot of us love Looney Tunes, so um, they came up with this show for all of us to uh, walk down memory lane with Looney Tunes. It yeah, doesn't it shock is. me it's, 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 you know uh, this. Yeah, because yeah, it's uh, like uh, this guy and he uh, and he has this tuna. Well, it's a puppet of a tuna, mm -hmm. and he, uh, in the in the usual uh, cartoons or the classic uh, Bugs Bunnies, plus the classic Woody Woodpeckers and Tom and Jerry's and Tex Avery's. Uh, maybe they'll slip a little Mighty Mouse in there, but uh, it's all the cartoons that I grew, uh, me and Quincy grew mm -hmm. up with. Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Fantastic. You know, 
They're just fun to watch. You know, um, wake up in the morning and have coffee, and then. I mean, I never knew how much, uh, like, uh, how much the the Looney Tunes are like. Uh, they, they, they used to use those cartoons. There's so much about the World War Two and the Looney Tunes. So. Oh yeah, well, that was that was it. You know, I back mean, then. yeah, that's how they're like. The whole uh, country was was all support of America back then. You know, even the even the the the, the Hollywood was all in support of the troops. But you yeah, know, nowadays, the, it, like uh, I never like uh, it, it was the cartoons, the Popeyes. And, the, and especially uh, Bugs Bunny that it uh, filled me in on what the gas house gorillas we- really were. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three strikes around. Yeah, but the, like uh, back in the back in those wartime days and everything, they used to have these crooked gangster types that that, that used to run in. They used to have like mob wars uh, on who right, on Shane. who gets to fill up the gas <laughs> tank in your house. Well, yeah. well, after tonight, you guys should be the gas house gorillas. All right. Look at that, Shane. I'm gonna look at that. There's, this is Rocky. You know, the gangsters. There's Rocky the gangster and... Yeah, you know, but the, uh, and yeah, the guy had just did... Ah, 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 sandwich. That's the Tasmanian devil. Um, yeah, there was like uh, two main gangsters. There was the that like uh, there was a uh, like Ro- there was the uh, Rocky, the Ed- Edward J. Robinson one. What's the name of that actor? Shane with their lips. Edward- yeah, Edward J. Robinson. Yeah, and then and then there was that other gangster with the big with the big hat. Shut up, you lunkhead. <laughs> That's what. I- shut I like- up, shutting up. Shut up, shut up. Jeez, Rocky, this is just like at the amusement park. You shut up. Shut up. Well, he's fine. Like, um, well, to make it Looney Tunes, you gotta have a little Rocky, then, you know, then the... Well, but then, well, it's coitins for you, Rocky. Coitins. Oh, no, not that, that. Here. <clears throat> oh, they're adorable. Someone pass me the manwich. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... So what you got the, over there? Uh, you looking at girly pictures over there? Well, yeah, we look at you know. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Okay, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Ooh, ooh. That's Miley Cyrus. Doesn't she look like the Miz? <laughs> Hold on, let me take a peek. Here. <clears throat> and don't forget the the, the coyote and the roadrunner. <laughs> oh, that's great, Quincy. We're talking about this. We oh, care less about. <laughs> that's right. We can care less about the coyote and the roadrunner right now. All right. I just discovered these pictures today. I'm like, Jesus Christ! For those of you who are listening, Ricky Bittman is showing us like you know. Pictures of Miley Cyrus naked. For where'd you find these things? Reddit. Reddit. I wish I never got involved. Now, now, is that really her? Because where are her tats? No, it's uh, well. I guess yeah, maybe you're right. But this this could have been taken a while ago. She's, All right. There's a lot of pictures of her out there. That's Hannah Montana. Yeah, we're gonna. That's no her. no that's relation her. no relation to Bull Montana. By the way, <laughs> that's her. In a in a weird way, she kind of looks like Abby a little in that picture. Yeah, she does. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> I want to look at that one. Yeah, doesn't she look like the Miz right there? <laughs> oh, she does. She does look like the Miz. That's. that's but I'm gonna tell you why I'm on a Miley Cyrus. Kid. That's miserable. But go, <laughs> go ahead. I watched this video the other day of her singing "These Boots Are Made for Walking." Right. Remember that old San Nancy Sinatra song? Of course. I don't know when she recorded it. I think it was back during the election because she dedicated it to Hillary Rodham Clinton. Like we we care who she votes for. We know. But I'm telling you right now, if you're listening out there, check look for this video. Miley Cyrus doing these boots are made for walking. She got a little red cowgirl outfit on. Right. She's a very talented young lady. And I think she's got a lot over this Taylor Swift that's all the rage right now. Right. So I mean Taylor Swift, you don't want are you interested in this at all? A Taylor Swift? The whole well, my theory on the Taylor I Swift. I want to hear it. Right. I want to hear it. Taylor Swift appeals. Remember the song uh, 17 by Janice Ian? Of course. Uh, when I was 17, I made up oh, boyfriends. Yes. Yeah. That, 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 that love was meant for beauty queens. Yeah, that was very, uh, yeah, yeah. And I it mean, was a heartbreaking song. It was. I, I mean, I know it, so I obviously liked it. Exactly. <laughs> so she sang for the, the, listen, we all know there's beautiful work girls, there's beautiful, there's handsome men, there's ugly men, there's beautiful girls, there's ugly women. I think Miley Cyrus broke through to the popular girls who all of a sudden realized, well, yeah, we do get shit on and we do get broken up and we get cheated on by our boyfriends. That's why she's so immensely popular because you don't really see very homely girls at these concerts. All the videos you see of girls losing their shit at, at Taylor Swift concerts, they're, 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 they're nice looking popular young girls, you right, can tell. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So I think, and like, uh, who was it? Lady Gaga came out and she was the one who led all the ugly girls. She was the one who had a meat suit, right? Yes. And okay. she, all her fans were called the monsters. She's going to be in Joker too. Yeah. She's now left the fans behind and now you got her. But she sings, I think Taylor Swift just sings just to the pretty girls. But 
Talent aside, I think Miley Cyrus has over and her Petunia, in spades. And Petunia, for some weird reason, loves Taylor Swift. Yeah, uh, I don't see I it. I don't get it. I mean, and Abby, of course, goes to every Taylor Swift concert she I can. know, and Abby's probably going to be bullshit when she hears this, but I'm just saying, you know, it's like I think she cashed in on that market. Oh, well, you know what? You know, good for her, I guess. But I will say this. Regardless, Miley Cyrus is a thousand times more talented. I wouldn't go to either of their concerts, Not but, you know. because she likes to take her clothes off either. That's beside the point. Well, that, that is your screensaver over there on your phone there, Bitman. <laughs> I Jeez. think uh, my no, young, uh, Fox. yeah my young, uh, my favorite uh, young pop uh, uh, pop star uh, has been Avril Lavigne lately. Oh wow, she making a comeback or what? I haven't seen her in a while. She well, okay? Yeah, I mean she's still looking uh, very fine and everything, and uh, she's uh, she's looking to uh, to, to to just uh, tie the knot. Yeah, well, no, no, just uh, stop this mild this whole Miley craze or the, this. <laughs> oh, she wants to stop the Taylor the, uh, the yeah the Taylor uh, the Taylor craze and everything. I uh, mean not Miley, but uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Even went to a party recently, and somebody filmed that she sang the song by uh, Journey. Don't stop believing. Oh yeah, did it, did, did, did it abruptly end? Well, it, it abruptly started. I All wish right. she would release this as a single because it's outstanding. These are the best, these are the best on your rings in the state. <laughs> Good old soprano reference. I there. remember. See, even even to that, that was a weird ending. You know, even Jeff even asked James Gandolfini. You know, yeah. he what did you say to him that night? He, he said on the final episode, I thought that my power went out. Yeah. He looked, looked at him, he was like, yeah, he shot hey, you yeah, look yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It took him a second to make that smile. Was he like, was oh. like, yeah, I haven't heard that today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that was a great ending. I mean, here we are talking about it seventeen yeah. years mm -hmm. later. I, I I do wish they did a little more. Well, they can't mm -hmm. anymore because no. you know because old James is gone. So mm -hmm. I guess the uh, the uh, official verdict is that the uh, the guy Chase who invented the Sopranos, yeah, David Chase, he said he's he got killed. Yeah, yeah it was a uh, Gandolfini was a huge loss. He would have made a great Al Capone actually. Oh, he was tremendous. Yeah. Well, you know why they they said there's a lot of uh, that there was there's callbacks to the. When he was talking to Bobby Bacala about death. In, in the boat. Yeah. He's talking about, and they were talking about, what do you think happens? I think this just goes right to black. Yeah. He said, it's not going to be cinematic. All right. It just Something goes right like to that. black. Yeah. And, and the guy who whacked happened. him was the guy in the members only. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. But you know what the sad thing is? I think, I think, so that guy wasn't probably in the mafia. No, he was probably a hired guy. Yeah. But we'll see. But the whole, whole idea was like, they, I don't think they would have, the mafia wouldn't have shot him in front of his family. So who was who was the one who set him up? You know, they made peace with the New York family. I, I don't know. Unless it was the, you know, could have been anybody. Could have been the guy that hung himself. Maybe his, I don't know. But it could have been the Russians that sent him. The, uh, yeah, the Russian that got away. That could have yeah. been. They could have paid him off and yeah. uh, and whatnot. But I mean, I don't think the mafia would have killed him in front of the wife and the kids. Like, ma, that's sacred. And the ma, well, you know, they 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 did to one guy. I forgot who it was. Not in the Sopranos, but in real life. They were actually, he was at a party, a birthday party with his family, went in and whacked him. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I, I forgot which uh, mafioso it was. Jeez, I don't know that story. But. You ever go by Spock's Steakhouse in Manhattan where uh, Paul, yes. Paul, Kestel was Paul Castellano got yeah. whacked? Just laying right out on the sidewalk. Right on the street. It was right before Christmas in yeah. 1985. Yeah. Every time in New York, I walk by there. And it's yeah. like, you know, you know, you, you know. It's history. Oh, uh, there's no question. I mean, God. Yeah, you know, there's, there's Dallas for Kennedy and there's yeah. Spock Steakhouse for Paul Castellano. Big, yeah. Big I mean, pool. yeah, a lot of a lot of history. I mean, we love uh, we love going all over New York and uh, stopping at like uh, Ground Zero and the the, the, the Seinfeld Cafe and uh, all these uh, well, landmarks. About those things are like way far apart, aren't they? Which ones? The Seinfeld Cafe. And oh, the, that's, you're talking. Zero? You're talking. You're talking miles. miles. Yeah, I was gonna say, geez. You're talking Ground Zero's at the end of Manhattan and the uh, and and. The, the restaurant, the, it's almost is, in Harlem, isn't it? It's it's no, it's on the west side, upper west side. Okay, it's almost near the George Washington Bridge. It's not too right. far wow. from that. Okay, so you're talking. I mean, we brought Bull down there. We made him hike once. Oh, oh you want to hear about a miserable day that I was? I bet that was some wine and just going on. I don't fucking hate Seinfeld. And he <laughs> promised me a dinner, and you know that bullshit. I hate this show. I Why do I gotta go to this show? And then, you know, then if Seinfeld come up, hey, Jerry, yeah, hey, oh hey, yeah, buddy. I bet. Bull listens to the show now up at, at the Blueberry Hill. Hi, Bull. He's listening with all his nurse friends out there and whatnot. They running around like those nurses on Benny Hill and the garters and stockings. <laughs> Bull, hey. Bull, has, Bull has some little orderly and he's like <laughs> tapping them on the head. That would be funny. It's now known as Bull's Hill. <laughs> Bully Hill, Bully, what are you doing there, brother? <laughs> so we got the we got some uh, we got some big news. The 
Ricky Bittman, I heard your stickers are going all over the place now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. They're like on, like, like wildfire time of rich. Everywhere. I mean, we can go down in Florida. Um, they're being picked up. They were all over Boston recently. I heard that. Yeah, we were being picked up everywhere. And uh, down at the casinos, uh, there was a sighting of them down at the Mohegan Sun. Mohegan Sun. So, you know, people are picking now, them up. Now, if people want to get a hold of these stickers, can they email you? Middle of the night podcast. I know it's a long address. Middle of the night podcast at gmail.com. And they can also DM you on Twitter at Bitman Ricky. Yeah, Bitman Ricky, and I'm on the Instagrams at Ricky Bitman, and I'm on Facebook as Ricky Bitman. So these are fantastic. These are quality magnets. Yeah, some of them, you know. Well, they, yeah, there's magnets and stickers. I'm so, glad you mentioned that. You know, that. whoever wants these things, mm-hmm. you just mail them off. We'll They're send them off to you. Collectors' items. It only takes one stamp. That's it. And our good I'll friend, and our good friend Doug down in New Jersey, big time fan. He's down there pushing some merch for you. Yep, and he wants to, he wants you to get on Facebook. See, Doug, I told him. And he told me, I'm, I'm thinking about He's it, Doug. About I heard about it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of close. I'm on Instagram, which is kind of like Facebook. All right. You know, what's, what does Doug have to download to, to talk to us on this podcast? Oh, he has to download Discord. Discord, Doug. Download that, and then we'll talk. Real simple. Discord, Doug. You can be known as Discord, Doug. Discord, Doug, right out of New Jersey. Because I used to talk to Doug. Doug. Yeah, yeah, on the Twitter. (laughs) Uh, uh, (laughs) Clouded conversation people have gone bye-bye tonight (laughs) with all the gas they've been They're going rogue over over there. But yeah, Doug, yeah, definitely give me a shout out, give me a call and whatnot. We'll get just download some Discord. We'll get you right on this podcast. We should have him send pictures of uh, the time he made his son. His son went out for Halloween as Captain America. He made him the shield. Really? Un- you'd swear it was used in a movie. Incredible. I heard that he actually put one of my TC shirts on Frank Sinatra's he statue. He did. He did. Down in Hoboken. He did, and I said that's huge because I mean he could have caught some shrapnel. He could have been floating in the uh, East River for but that. You know. Listen, his last name is Palumbo. That's true. He, he said he said it's okay to use well, his last name. You no, know, it wasn't there. There was, there was a family down there. <laughs> I, all I'm saying is his last name is Palumbo. You know, there's the Gambinos, <laughs> the Palumbos, the Corleones, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the Johnny Sachs. He's an incredibly huge fan. He does Santa every Christmas. He's an amazing Santa. Grows the actual beard and everything. Really? Wow, oh, that's, yeah. that's commitment. And his, his uh, Santa garb is just like none you've well, ever you know, seen. Well, you know, I was just going to call him Chuck Palumbo. That was a wrestler, wasn't it? <laughs> Chuck Palumbo. Uh, you know. Doug, we're going to be down in New Jersey. Jeff and I are going to be down there at the end of April for a big Comic Con down there, right, right in Parsippany. Parsippany, yeah. Not too far. He mm-hmm. now you're not too far from where he is. You yeah, know what I mean? Not, not too I'll far be. from uh, uh, like Daniel Larusso's cu- uh, uh, Uncle Louie. Yeah, that's right. That's Parsippany. right. Not too far from Newark. So if you if you're in the neighborhood there, Dougie, come on down. You I'll can, be in Tampa Bay that weekend. You can be in ta- why, why are you gonna be in Tampa Bay? Well, Tosh wants to go see Kenny Chesney, Uncle Cracker, Zach Brown, and some other chooch while singing. Oh, and uh, yeah, no, Zach Brown. I said big concert down in Tampa. No, the big. Did you was- just say some other chooch? What's that? Did you just say some other yeah, chooch? Some other chooch. Oh, okay. I'm just making sure and everything. You haven't heard the word. I haven't heard chooch in a while. <laughs> well, you know, I, my, my, it's Tosh is Italian, so I get called the chooch a lot. Now, yeah. speaking of chooch, <laughs> have you gotten the Winnebago fixed? Yeah, it's just running, yeah. You, you, have you, when are you going to take it on the road? Oh, well, the weather's warming up, TC. It so is. It's, it it's is. getting there. You got to wait. You look a couple more degrees up. Couple, couple more, more degrees. Yeah, yes, today was very nice. It was. It was like 60 but, degrees. Yeah, when it gets to What's the that high in 60? that crappy Celsius? I hate Celsius. Oh, I don't hate Celsius. And everybody in the whole world uses Celsius. You know what? Everybody in the whole world uses the metric system. We don't because that's why we're the greatest they country. They tried, but we, we, we stood, stood our ground and said, F that. It's degrees, damn it. Fahrenheit. Yeah. Which, I, is, which was a band by our good friend Charlie Farron. That's right. They, well, they were a good band. It's, it's impossible. impossible. An impossible an world. An impossible world. Underrated band. Charlie Farron is probably the nicest guy in rock and roll that never got his due, but he doesn't He doesn't cry about no, it. No, he doesn't. Very He's talented man. Very talented man. We should get him back on the podcast, and he can sing Impossible World right here. If you don't know who Charlie Farron is, Google him. Yep. Listen to his music. The man is an icon. He's been my longtime close personal friend for over 30 years. Wow. Wow, and he's out there on Spotify. I remember, I remember going to see him at the channel, and I went up to one of the record stores, and I have a Fahrenheit album. Oh, yeah. You bring his name yeah. in the channel, you, they'll let you right in. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Every song on that album, that they, the Fahrenheit yeah. debut album, was yeah. a top ten in my book. I'm telling you. Good, I good mean, stuff. if, if, I bring, that if you're at the I channel and bringing in and bringing up uh, Bull's name doesn't work for you, they bring up Charlie <laughs> Farron's name. No, no, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. No, that, that's for damn sure. I was in the channel one night, and uh, me and my buddies are standing at the back. There was a little bar you could buy cans of Budweiser. Otherwise, you had draft beer and stuff up front, but you could buy cans of Budweiser or bottles up front, but you could, in the back you could get cans. So I was standing by this, and there's like a door 
This is a nondescript door that goes right out into the parking lot. And all of a sudden, we heard. I'm like, uh oh. I'm not opening it. And somebody joked, we were there to see Devo. I guess I should have started did with you that. Did you whip it? Whip it good? Well, we, they did that night. And, and uh, my buddy John, John Laurenti goes, open the door. It's probably Devo. So I pushed that like a door just like that open. And it was Devo. Did they have the little hats on? Not yet, but they wore them that night. And he goes, any idea where the stage is? And I said, yes, gentlemen, right this way. And so, of course, I didn't know where I was taking him. I'm walking around. All of a sudden, some guy sees him. He's like, pushes me out of the way. And he says, all right, over here. So Devo was right there. Wow. Like, you had, you had a there. close encounter of the Devo yeah, kind. Yeah, it was cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, they were great. I saw the Ramones there. And I saw a big audio dynamite there. I saw Joe Strummer there. My God. Channel was saw BB yeah. King, Roy Orbison. Yeah, I saw quite a quite a few uh, good shows at the yeah. channel. I spot, uh, saw Spinal Tap there. Spinal yeah, Tap. I was at that show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah me, yeah, me and Quirky, <laughs> me and Quirky were at that show. And then from there, we drove over. We took the T over to uh, the Harvard Square Theater or the Coolidge Corner Theater, and they did a signing of the poster. And I didn't get a poster, but they did a Q and A and stuff. So, oh yeah, that was a fantastic night. Didn't yeah. you see? Didn't you see Gua there? Oh, a couple of times, a couple of times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the very first time I saw Gua was there, and then like I, and, and Bull was right there on the stage and everything. And yeah, uh, <laughs> everyone and, thought uh, he was part and, of the and, band. Uh, the, the lead singer Odorous was using him as a shield and everything. Was <laughs> grabbing Bull and like using Bull's uh, body to block crowd rollers. Well, you know, he must have felt Odorous. Oh, sorry, Bull, if you're listening. Uh, but yeah, Bill Montana was a legend at the channel. Yeah, I probably was there. I, mean, I, I you, didn't know him at the time. You you knew about the story about Roy Orbison taking him out to dinner, right? No. Oh, every time Roy Orbison came to town, they had like like a kinship. For some weird reason, you know, Bill's was a very lovable guy uh, when no you question. meet him and whatnot. But I, I, Roy Orbison took a shine to him. Wow. And every time he would come to Boston and if he played the channel or, you know, he would, he would he found him somehow yeah. and they would go out to dinner. Jesus, I never knew that. Oh, yeah. That's why Bull loves singing Pretty Woman. So I was there when he played the channel. Two weeks later, he died. I can't blame Bull for that. Yeah. But but I was like one of his last, second to last show, I think. Right. So yeah, that, that, didn't help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just think of Bull Montana's legacy. I mean, we were talking about like he's, he's passed on, but he hasn't. Yeah, what do you mean? I mean, Larry Bird used to watch him wrestle and tape him and bring it into the, when they had the practices at the Boston God <laughs> to show the rest of the Celtics. Yep. Roy Orbison took him out for dinner. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, the guy, the guy, his, he's the real life Forrest Gump. He had all the ideas for Star Wars, too. Didn't uh, he? Well, that's what I heard, you know, <laughs> especially the job of the hut, you know. I used to try to pick up girls with that. Hey, ladies, do you know I had all the ideas for Star Wars? And they were probably like, geek. Yeah, they just left. You, have to, you, you, know, you had to say you had all the, all the ideas for Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, well, hindsight's 2020. What can I say? Well, Quincy's going to be 2020 soon when he gets his eye surgery. Nice. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope uh, that let's hope it's not botched and everything. I don't know, knock on wood, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> no, we I'm just got him calm down for From what I hear, um, the place I'm going to is very good. You're um, going to be fine. They yeah, got very will. good surgeons. What do you, you know got what? the mass eye in here? He is. Over in Boston. Okay. Uh, whereabouts in Boston is that? Uh, the subway platform, Chinatown. Is that near the garden? What, Mass <laughs> Yeah, he's going uh, there. Yeah. yeah, it's not too far from uh, the, the garden. It's behind mm -hmm. where the no, old... Stanford Street, actually. Uh, where the old Buzzy's Roast Beef used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, Charles I never Street went Jail. to... I never went there. I did. Okay, was it good? Then, uh, yeah, Buzzy's Roast Beef was not as... Cause back when Kelly's was good, right. they had the best roast beef sandwiches. But Buzzy's had the best French fries in the... In world, really? Yes. I used to go to Boston's cut. Best Beef in East Boston. I don't think I was ever there. Buzzy's Roast Beef. They were right down by the uh, Charles Street Jail. Do you know who I went there with one night? Who? The Bushwhackers. Oh Jesus! They must have really thrown down. You know, they were calm when they weren't, you know, on TV. Yeah, they weren't. They didn't come walking like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah like, oh, I'm oh, sure they have famous roast beef, mate. Well, there are many good roast <laughs> beef <laughs> places around. Oh yeah, but there's, there's a lot of cool guys called Buzzy too. Yeah. Uh, isn't uh, Thornton Mellon's uh, personal carpenter called Buzzy? That's right. He had to throw a couple hundred dollars on the bill. Buzzsaw. Um, oh, thanks, Buzzy. Yeah, why don't you throw a couple? You know what? You have class. Oh, it rubbed off on you, Buzzy. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and, man. and speaking of that, Derek Lutz, yeah. Robert Downey Jr., yeah. in, oh. just won an Academy, Academy Award. Award. Oh, yes. Of course, when his I, very first Academy Award. Good for him. When I'm I, very I, proud when I of saw him. that, I was like, 
Derek Lutz <laughs> from Back to School yeah. is an Academy Award winner. And he was even great in that movie. He was great in Weird Science. He was always a great, great actor, that kid. He, he just finally. seems like a fun to have around. Yeah. You know? yeah, I, yeah. I love like, his speech, too. I'd like to thank the Academy and my childhood, my crazy childhood or something like that, he said. Yeah, in, he, in, like, in that uh, order. yeah, yeah, something like, it's my, uh, yeah, it was my childhood that brought me here. My, yeah. uh, my, my screwed up childhood. That my screwed added. up childhood. That's you you know, was. his dad was in Boogie Nights. Yes, I did know that, as a matter of fact. Remember when they were trying to get the tapes from the record producer? Yes, yeah, that was his dad. That was his dad. Oh, I get it. That's a Y problem, not a a M problem, whatever it was. Your problem. Uh, I don't know this YPMP. I don't don't know. (laughs) All I know is the magic on those tapes. It's ours. (laughs) You know, I was thinking of that scene the other night when they go to the guy's house with the firecrackers. Ray Ed Jackson. (laughs) Here's the deal. Who who shot that again? Paul Thomas Anderson? He was the director? Okay, right. The tension he created with that scene with the firecrackers and their reaction to it and everything, and because you knew something was going to go down. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And the guy's yeah. testing the coke and everything, and you knew shit, and you see the gun. But he, like, really created that tense, tense situation with that scene, and the firecrackers only added to it. Oh, yeah, you could see them flinch and everything. Yeah. I had John C. <laughs> Riley, every single firecracker. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's Cosmo, he's Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> do you know Don't who, worry about it. Do him. you know who mentioned that in his review? Who? Was Roger Ebert. Really? He goes, that scene with the firecrackers was one of the most intense things yeah. I've ever seen in films. Yeah. And he was right. Yeah, I, I, because I, I was thinking about that, because, not, not to digress, because I know you guys probably don't watch this show, but it's called The Bear. Have you heard about this? I know Lip's on it. Lip from uh, Shameless. But they did a scene, a dinner scene, okay? And uh, Bob Odenkirk is in it. Uh, it's John Mulaney. He's a stand up right now, is in this scene. Jamie Lee Curtis is in this scene. Um, Who's the guy that played the Punisher? I'm trying to. John Bernthal is in the scene, and uh, I think that's all, like the actors you would know. And it's a family, a dysfunctional family at Christmas, and the mother's trying to make it all perfect, and she can't, and she's because she's an alcoholic, and she's kind of bipolar and stuff like that. And the, she's timing all the dishes, and the timer's going off, and it, it's just. Compl- and I'm telling you, it's the same thing. I really? felt so. And my and, and Tasha's like going, I don't like the way this is going. I said, No, no. So I rewound it. I said. How are you feeling watching this? And she said, I, I just don't like it. I said, that's that's what he's going for. Right. He's trying to make everybody feel that. I, everybody that watches this scene, I'm telling you, your skin crawls. There's an extended scene of the Riyadh Jackson scene in Brooklyn Nights. Really? When they leave, you know, they escape and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the cops show up, helicopters show up, and he gets in a big gunfight with them. Really? But I don't know if it was filmed or whatnot. I don't know, I don't oh, know if it's on a DVD say, extra damn. somewhere. Uh, you know who that was? That's, um, what's his name, from Raiders of the Lost Ark. You throw me the yeah, egg, yeah. I throw you the whip. Al- Adios. Yeah. Alfred Molina. And he was uh, Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus, <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, yeah, very, uh, another uh, very underrated. But, uh, well, like, uh, you see it, just see him in so many obscure yeah. roles. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Oh, he was in that movie with Sally Field. Not no, without my say, daughter. Without, I thought I was going to pull one out of the air and you beat me to it because I just saw that right, the other yeah. day. <laughs> Not without my yeah. daughter. That was, a, that was a fucked up movie. That was. It was a true story, too. True story, yeah. You know, he he played another a, ten scene. He played a complete dick in yeah. that. Oh God, did he ever! But he's a very nice guy. We I met him in this in the Edison Cafe. I bet he is. Which is no longer there. And he was there eating breakfast on one side of the of the restaurant, and the other side was Richard Dreyfus. Wow. So I I, I I obviously went for Richard Dreyfus first. I would imagine. <laughs> and then I had him sign a you know a Spider Man thing. Now Dreyfus was eating breakfast. Yeah. Now, how did it go over? Because he doesn't seem to be very approachable. Very nice man. Was he? That's right. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Very uh-huh. nice guy. Uh, can't you see him eating? No, no, we didn't bother no. when he was eating. We, oh, okay. Yeah. We waited for him to, when we outside. You know, we, we, I'm like, holy shit, that's Richard Dreyfuss. I sucked down my eggs real quick. That's cool. And I waited outside for uh, for him to come out. And he's like, yeah, oh, you know, how, where are you from? Oh, wonderful. I'm here, but I did a lot of shows up there. Wonderful. I saw you inside. I knew you were the type. You were, you were having pancakes <laughs> over there. You were, and was that, were you with Bull Montana? <laughs> Ray Orbison told me all about him. You know, he he, he, he was down in, uh, he tried to get a, a bit part in Jaws. <laughs> he owes Orbison about three steaks. Jaws and American Graffiti. Yeah. Well, you're wonderful. That's great. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And Close Encounters of the Third Kind. One of my top five films of all time. What about Bob? And what about Good Bob? Movie. And Krippendorf's tribe. I just thought I'd throw that in <laughs> because uh, I wasn't saying anything. It was just about a year ago I got that autograph for you. Yeah, I love that. It's one of my prized Where possessions. Where he posed with the, uh, it was a calendar. Yep, my Close Encounters original from that year came in the, the cardboard folder and everything. And he had it upside down in yeah. front of his face. He yeah. did that on purpose. Yeah. 
and he was. You ever see when he was on the uh, podcast with Bill yes, Maher? I finally did. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that because it was fascinating, and I, I watched the video for that reason. And he just kept slowly melting it's, down, it's slumping down in the chair. <laughs> he was literally like this, like like this his ass. Was I like, don't know if he was on something or he's just. Because my point that out right. He goes, "What the hell are you doing? You're like you're melting into this chair. <laughs> you were in DC camp. <laughs> he's oh, you know, he's coming up to the. Uh, that Cabot Theater, mm -hmm. which we were unlucky. And for those of you who may have listened to the yeah. last show, Bobcat Goldthwait went in the stage entrance oh. in the back. Oh, you didn't get him? No, we, we waited out front because all the autograph hounds go, the place is so small. All, all, all of them come in the front. Oh, the don't front listen door. to them. You guys should have known better. Well, we didn't know there was a back door. Uh, there's always a back door. Well, we found out, you know, no loss. Yeah. Because he'll be, he'll be doing Comic Cons eventually. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. We got to, uh, next time we got to listen to our buddy Eddie Dezine. Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head, back doors are not secret. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> With, that is true. But I'm, you know as well as I do, Jeff, that he'll be doing Chiller or one of these shows eventually. Wow. Yeah, he, mm. yeah, he certainly will. I wasn't, uh, the, the, like, uh, uh, like, I wasn't very upset. Uh, the, like, uh, I was like, oh, well. Freaking bobcat! And yeah. he, I mean, God bless him. You know, he's a great comedian, and whatnot. But the, the, the theater was small. He only drew about fifty people. Oh, really? Yeah, I think Ooh. the place only holds a hundred. Still. So, but it, it was it was a six thirty p.m. show. It was. Well, he had two shows. He had that oh, okay. and, a, and right, a nine right, o'clock. Right. We didn't stick around for the nine o'clock. Well, the nine o'clock was probably more people. Than but you know, he was actually the director for the Jimmy Kimmel show for a while. Really? Really? That's why it went downhill after he left. Give him a good slap. Yeah, he's a punk. I don't like him at all. He says he was related to Terry Funk. He's not related to Terry Funk. Jimmy Kimmel? Uh, something like that. No, who was it that was related to Terry Funk? Well, that's actually uh, Sling Blade. Yeah, yeah. Billy, Billy Bob, Bob Thornton. Right. I even asked him that when we yeah. met him He's, on July 5th, that's what they tell me 2009. He goes, that's what they tell me. Mm. Top-notch guy. I could see Very him being cool. related to Terry Funk. I can't see Jimmy Kimmel. He's such a pussy. Or well, well, maybe Jimmy Kimmel was related to Roddy Piper. There was some, some, some unfamed wrestler. A, I don't even want to know if that's true. Jeez. I don't think so. I just watched something with Piper on it. What the hell was it? Oh, the uh, A&E special with Hogan and Piper. Andre? No, it was Hogan and uh, Piper were. They, they were uh, what do they call them? Uh, Rivals? Yes. Excellent, excellent. And did you watch the uh, story of John Tenta, Earthquake? I have not yet. Oh, my God. I'm telling you right now. will absolutely change your entire view of this. I mean, he was kind of a throwaway to me, and I feel so ashamed that I, I kind of never really I paid much attention. I used to see him many, many times. At the McDonald's across the street from the Boston God yeah. when he wrestled there, he he died when he was forty something. He was in his forties, and he yeah. looked like he was ninety something. Yeah, it was a very tragic story. He was like working retail and everything after things went south. But everybody heard he was one of the nicest guys the in the world. His children loved him. His wife loved him. It's one of the most heartbreaking dark side of the rings you'll ever see. Watch it. I just watched the Buff Bagwell one. I, I watched that last night. But he night. was a train wreck anyway. Yeah, he really was. I mean, anybody who takes advice from Missy Hyatt. Oh, God, does she look awful. Yeah, oh, you know, if this was 1985, forget, I had posters of Missy. I admit, yeah. all over the place. She was hot. But now, it's like, oh, my God. You what happened? Her. There's one that she's walking around somewhere. She's got a half shirt on. And her stomach just looked like a, like a Band-Aid you wore in the pool. Oh. It's like all like, uh, just like it's all fucked up. <laughs> Listen, I know I'm no prize, she looks like, I'm just she, saying. She looks like she'd be, she should be singing in Jabba's Palace. Oh, it was, yeah, exactly. Like that, like I look at Pam Anderson, she's aging kind of gracefully. She's older and everything. Sure. But she didn't destroy herself. I think what happens when you get this plastic surgery and then your real face starts aging around it, it gets all distorted. It looks like the, what was the girl from, uh, the woman from uh, Who's the Boss? What was her name, Jeff? The, Judith Light? No, the old lady. We met <laughs> oh, her. Oh, oh, Catherine Hellman. Catherine Hellman. Remember her in Brazil when she's pulling yes, her rubber face? Exactly. That's what she. That's that's what Missy Hyatt looks like now. Or well, like the woman with the swollen face in Tootsie when she was in the bed and they're, they're saying, if man put his hands like on me like that, I just throws the plant off the wall. Right. She looks like her all face was all swollen. Again, I'm no prize, but Jesus, Missy Hyatt. Right. I don't know what the hell right. happened. I, you know, I was, I was watching it with my nephews, and I was like, in 1985, oh, that shoot. girl, I mean, could make Elton John pop yeah. up, pop, pop his nut, okay? <laughs> That's a good one. All right? But, if, you know, now, oh. Yeah. God help us. Oh, my God. Tough to get old. It's, it does suck I, I will say, old. you know, women always get the upper hand, but when it comes to aging, I think men are. Of course they are. <laughs> unless, and again, unless you do too much plastic surgery. Right. Like Quincy over here. <laughs> Listen, nah, you're like a young spring chicken. Surgery. Um, I'm just getting some... 
Got down to work. I'm getting some hearing aids and eyeglasses. And Tell the doctor when you go in and say, hey, doc, can you do me a favor? Can you just make me one big eye right in the middle of my head? Just see what he says. You know what you look like? You look, you look like that Cyclops from Krull. <laughs> <laughs> is he scary? Is he horrible? Oh, he's scary, all right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, what kind of a character is he? He was a Cyclops. Yeah. Cyclops? Yeah, Cyclops oh. is a thing with one, one eye. eye. One eye in the middle. Yeah, look up, look, you know, we'll, we'll show you the picture. Maybe Ricky yeah. Bittman can show you. I'm going to try to do this quick. I'll Cy show you Cyclops from Krull. There was a Cyclops featured in um, Lost in Space, you might remember. And there was also a Cyclops that was in uh, Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay. In Greek mm -hmm. mythology. So he does horror yeah. movies. This guy's Cyclops. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Leela from Futurama is a Cyclops. Yeah, uh, like, uh, like uh, Kelly that's right. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. She's yeah, only has one eye. One that you'll be able to see. Let's see if this works. See, he only has one eye in the middle of his head. All right. That's so, a Cyclops. Um, then you got the Cyclops from the X-Men. I had a scan so, through a million pictures of so him. So I think you need to, uh, when you get your cataract surgery, you can say, pull the doctor aside. Listen, for an extra C note, can you please make me a Cyclops? Well, what's its purpose? Is it better? Or is well, it Well, you worse? have this one big eye. You don't You'll be worry signing about autographs it. at Schiller. You, you kidding me? You'd be on the cover of, you know, <laughs> Weekly World News. You could be the karaoke Cyclops. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. How do they install a third eye? How do you make a third eye? How do you go about... This man's innocence just warms my heart. See, I really don't know how, but that's why he's the doctor. <laughs> Maybe they do a yeah. they do it with cataract, uh, third eye. And maybe I don't know, but you know maybe you go they, yeah. Maybe they he would need to s scrape out the skull in the middle and make an eye hole, yeah, like an ice cream scoop, you and, and fill in the other two. You <laughs> farging eye hole, yeah, farging <laughs> eye hole. You and your bastards can gamble. <laughs> All right, Quincy, wrap the show up. Okay, uh, well, we hope that you've enjoyed uh, this episode. Uh, please drive home carefully. Thank you for watching. Uh, and we hope to see you again on another episode. Um, and remember, we, we never, never close. close. Jesus. I only have an eye for you. <laughs>